trouble divining this one? No. No. Sis Boom Ba. Sis Boom Ba. Describe the sound made when a sheep explodes. If you want to know what the real difference is between human consciousness and the consciousness the Gnostics called the Demiurge, it is that our human consciousness can do cool stuff like remote viewing, telekinesis, levitation, remote perturbation, and most importantly, we can divine the future. That is, we can see the exact future before it happens, and as it happened. Access to this ability, to this superpower, seems to be the main purpose of humans in the land of Gog and Magog. If you've experienced deja vu, that is, seeing the future before it happens and then watching it happen, you've experienced a form of divination. Deja vu. It's a natural ability and an undeveloped talent within humanity. But since many religions, and in particular Western religions, have told us for centuries not to mess with it because witchcraft is magic and, well, Satan, we've pretty much given up the craft as totally taboo. Instead, we admire the clean and articulate speed of computational computers and their ability to recall vast amounts of information nearly instantaneously. But no matter how cold you get a computer, no matter how fast you make it, the processor still can't traverse time by calculations per second. At best, the AI can calculate a trajectory, but they cannot guarantee with 100% certainty that they are going to hit the target. Human consciousness, however, can traverse time and space to observe the future reality. Again, we call this skill set divination or prophecy. For what it's worth, we can teach apes to use sign language, but it will be a long time before they are divining the future. We humans were a tool, and we were ruled by a royalty, a king. Peter Lavenda once said that the words royal and real were cognate which is to say that they represent the same word and meaning by extension. What is royal is real, he said, as in the authority at the top is what tells us what is real. This is why royalty wrote laws. What they say is what is real. The list of atrocities committed upon the people by kings is long and cruel, but like it or not, what they say is royal and a royal decree is a decree of reality. It is important to know who is saying what is real. And when you demand that you are the setter of what is real, it means that you are the house of Israel. And the house of Israel comes in two flavors, one based in algebra and one based in geometry. The Hebrew language has some very interesting characteristics, not just in its numerology, but in how the language describes our characters the Hebrew word for pregnancy is harayon. Every Hebrew letter also has a numerical value, and the letters for pregnancy add up to 271, which is also the number of days the human embryo gestates in its mother's womb. The word for the first city in the Bible is Babel, and that word also starts with two of these bad boys, Bet Bet Lamed. That Lamed, where's my Lamed? I have a Lamed somewhere, I promise. Lamed, and it means royalty or something special. It's the tallest letter of the alphabet, rising a head and shoulders above all the rest. So it makes sense that the second letter of words like Eluf and Elohim, which is the word for God that means majesty, would be a Lamed, because there's a sense of royalty in those things. So the word for Babel or Babel carries within the name itself the idea of what it is. It's a royal, not just a royal house, but a royal set of houses. Fun fact, that word that would just be royal house, one lamed in one bet, is the word lev, which means your heart, special. This language sometimes, man. So if we have a sense of what the algebraic looks like, then what is the geometric? And for that, we're going to finish with a quote by Eric Horning. Whoever wishes to understand ancient Egyptian culture, and especially its religion and way of thinking, must learn the language of images. Images are built of geometric shapes. To understand the language of the Egyptians, you have to understand a language designed with geometry. Access 
to all of this information comes by achieving a transcendental state. Three, you are getting deeper and deeper. Two, you are very near the bottom. One, you are peacefully at the bottom. You can hear me from down there, and only me. I am the focus of your attention. Do you understand? Yes, I understand. I hear only you. Go make me a ham sandwich. Hypnotism is just an exercise in focus that allows clarity and helps a person when they are given instructions or information. Like Johnny Carson's Karnak, he stops and focuses for a moment, mimicking the entry to a transcendental state to receive the information. It's a great bit, and today we call it remote viewing. It's very legitimate, and it is still being used by the military. We know this because Lou Elizondo was trained to use remote viewing and intuition during his counterintelligence career, according to his new book, Imminent. Lou's training, his ability to reach a transcendental state, allowed him to find a path for the information to become public. We call it intuition. Lou is not the only one operating with enhanced intuition within the DoD, but rather his training should be seen as indicative of the upper echelons of the DoD, who are operating with access to a remote viewing program and operate with a high level of intuition. I have your ham sandwich. Very good. Set it down. Now put up your finger. Now's our chance. Ask him for the marijuanas. <sighs> Bring me your marijuana. Guys, that's just not how this works. You can't do that. I was with you. What else did you ask me to do?